everybody and happy Thursday to you. Um, I'm going to walk you through your learning today um, as we go through uh, our understanding of the uh, Indian Ocean and the regions within. So a couple things. You're going to need to have your classwork page up um, and we're going to make sure that we're going to utilize our resources today on the classwork page. Um, I've also have um, some directions here with Google Slides that we're going to go through and, and understand uh, the process. Um, and then, oh my gosh, that's how you do it. <laughs> um, and then um, we're also going to be uh, looking at our uh, map of the Indian Ocean. So I asked you to bookmark that. So I have mine bookmarked right here. And you can see the different boundaries. We have our convergent boundaries in yellow. Um, with the Himalaya mountain range as India collides with Asia. We have also have this um, trench here, right along here, um, that's forming, uh, which is a convergent boundary, and it creates a subduction zone. So this is the area that we'll probably see a lot of earthquakes take place on. Uh, our, our divergent boundary, which is over here in the southwest uh, corner of the Indian Ocean, this is where new seafloor is being created. And then we have two transform boundaries um, and they'll create earthquakes, but not much is happening uh, within the mantle itself. So we're going to pay close attention to this today, um, this map here. So we want to understand a little bit more about um, the Indian Ocean in order to help Sri Lanka, this island nation right here, develop a warning system for tsunamis. And um, we're going to investigate this area. Uh, to better understand the earthquakes that can cause tsunamis within that region. And we know that an earthquake is a, a sudden, uh, like a sudden shaking of the earth. And in order for it to create a tsunami, it has to happen on the ocean floor. And it typically involves like um, an uplift. Okay. And when one floor, uh, the sea floor lifts up and the other comes down, uh, at those convergent boundaries, uh, water is displaced, and that's what's causing that sudden flooding. But the earthquake has to be strong enough to create this flooding. So um, a magnitude of 7 to 7.9 um, on the Richter scale is what would cause an earthquake to be a local tsunami. Okay, so a local tsunami would be, um, you know, partly an area of the ocean here. Um, it wouldn't go across the ocean. It would just affect maybe a few islands within the region itself. Uh, but if it is an eight, an earthquake of 8.0 or higher, um, you know, and, and it goes to 10 on the Richter scale, so an eight to 10, that's gonna be a very violent and strong earthquake that will cause uh, quite a bit of damage to the sea floor, quite a bit of uplift. And uh, as the energy release, it'll go across the whole entire ocean. So in this case, um, with the 2004 uh, Sumatra um, earthquake, it was a 9.0 on the Richter scale. So it happened um, all the way, it traveled all the way across the ocean here, and it actually uh, affected people on the east coast of Africa. So um, they did have reported deaths. The biggest deaths were Sumatra, Thailand here and uh, Sri Lanka and India, but they did have some uh, casualties on the East Coast as well. So what we're going to better understand today is where the earthquakes are taking place in that region, which of those are local earth or local tsunamis, and which of those will cause an ocean-wide tsunami. So um, right here, we're going to make sure we have our map and we pay close attention to the boundaries that those earthquakes are taking place. And we're gonna be opening up our tsunami alert. So I'm gonna ask that you play this video here. Um, you have to be in, in uh, presentation mode to play the video in order to uh, see how the simulation works. Oh. All right, so I'm going to pause that right there, but that's that's the directions itself, okay? Um, and I'm going to exit out of here, okay? Um, but I want you to watch this video to kind of show you how 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 it's kind of run through. Um, but essentially, we're going to be looking at the simulation today to distinguish earthquakes that will cause local tsunamis um, that don't travel far enough to hit Sri Lanka, and those that are ocean-wide tsunamis. 
Okay, so on our key, we're going to label those um, down below. So we'll use different symbols to mark the tsunamis. We'll use a clear circle if it's an earthquake, a circle that's filled in for a local tsunami, and a star for a um, ocean-wide tsunami. So to access the simulation, okay, we're going to have our map up here. But to access the simulation, you're going to go to your resources, and you're going to click Tsunami Alert. And they'll have you log in through Amplify. Some of your maps also have the link up here as well. Um, the one that I made didn't have the link initially, so you may have the link here in addition. Um, as always, log in with Google. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so um, we're going to slide the key over so we can see the landform. So it looks just like the map here. And um, we're going to move it to fixed, so it'll show all the earthquakes. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to click test. And it'll show all the earthquakes that take place within the area here. Now, each red dot is an earthquake. And you can click on the earthquake, and it'll tell you the magnitude and the location. Um, I would recommend when you click to study earthquakes, you you really start with the higher magnifications and you click on them and it goes all the way through like this. So you can see how the ocean wide tsunami, how the energy travels throughout. OK, so um, D3 right here. So it's kind of like battleship D3 has an earthquake of 8.0. So I go to my map and that is a ocean wide tsunami. So I'm going to click on the star and I'm going to click control C and then control V to copy that star. And I'm going to place that on D3. So here's D, one, two, three. So here's that where that earthquake takes place. All right. So then I'm going to go back to my tsunami alert. I'm going to click on the next one. All right. So K6, I click on K6. And I see how it, how it starts right here and it travels all the way across. So that, again, it's an eight or higher is an ocean-wide tsunami. So I'm going to go back to my map and I'm going to mark K6. Okay. So... Again, I click on the star, I go control C, control V, and I'm going to mark that as K6 right here. Okay, um, so you're going to do that for all of them. Uh, E4, that's a 7 to 7.9. So notice how when I click E4, the rings, that little ripple effect, stops at the second ring. So this is what we call a local tsunami. Uh, the tsunami waves really reached out as far as this point from the earthquake, and then they dissipated, they kind of leveled off. So this is um, a local tsunami, is at E4. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on the little dark circle, Control-C, Control-V, and then I'm going to click and drag that to E4. So here's E, one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to drop that little circle there. All right, and I'm going to do that again for L9. All right, so you see how L9, it's a local tsunami, and again, it's stopped after two little circles, and it's a magnitude of 7.7, .7, so pretty strong one but not, uh, not strong enough to create a ocean-wide tsunami. So again, Control-C, Control-V, um, and then L9. Oh, my little bubble's in the way. There we go, L9. All right, now, um, this is where I wish I had more foresight. I forgot to put the circle for the earthquake, just a regular earthquake, okay? So in order to get circles for the earthquake, um, you're going to click on the shape uh, description right here. Here's the shape. I'm going to select, select shape and I'm going to select the circle and then I'm going to draw a circle that's roughly the size of this circle right here. Okay, so roughly the size. Okay, and I may need to make my changes here so that it's um, white on the inside and um, you, if you have your pixelation at four because we were mapping the boundaries, it's got like a really strong rim we might just want to put that back down to one. Okay, so we're going to change the color to white, and we're going to change the thickness uh, to one pixel. All right, so there's my little circle. So I go back to my simulator. What was one? D4. So D4 is just an earthquake, 6.5, not strong enough to create a um, not strong enough to create a tsunami. So I go over here. I had made my little circle, and I go to D4. One, two, three, four. Okay. There we go. Now, here's the thing is once I make it, I can just go control C, control V, and I can go to the next one, which is C5. And I can just mark that down as C5 right here. Um, but again, I'll walk through the steps again to make a shape. You just click shape 
and you want circle. And then I would kind of make it roughly the size of the little earthquake circle there. And then you want to change it to uh, white on the inside and you want to change the thickness to one pixel. Then once you have it, you can just control C or in control V and drop it in those locations. What's another one? C5. Oh, so there are two earthquakes at C5. There we go. So I can just mark that two earthquakes down at C5. All right. So that's essentially what we're doing today. We're trying to get a better understanding of where the earthquakes are taking place in this region. And then we also need to get a better understanding of which boundary are they occurring at. So right here, I've got one, two, three, four that are kind of near the area of the transform boundary and this one convergent line. So we want to kind of pay attention to where all of the earthquakes are. So that's kind of the goal today um, is, is to run through and mark all the earthquakes that happen. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to email and I will do my best to respond back. Um, but ultimately, you need to map all of these earthquakes every single one of them on your map. Um, and then when you are done, we're going to screenshot this into our notebook. So when I open up my plate motion notebook, slide 26, the very last uh, slide on your notebook. <laughs> there it is, okay. Uh, upload a screenshot of your completed Indian Ocean map. So after you have mapped all the earthquakes, that's where you screenshot this and place it into slide 26 right here. Okay, um, have a great day and take care of yourself.